This right here is the biggest herniated disc that I've ever removed. And of course, that by itself is interesting. But what's even more interesting is what this patient was complaining of when he came to see me. So this young man in his mid-20s came to see me and he told me that he was having back pain for about a year and a half. And importantly, he did not have any shooting pain or sciatica going down the leg. Now, if somebody has low back pain and shooting pain going down into the leg, automatically you start thinking, you know, does this patient have a herniated disc? Do they have a bone spur? Do they have a pinch nerve? Which is why they're having this nerve pain. But this patient really only had low back pain. So when I started talking to this patient, I did a neurological examination, which was completely normal. There was no weakness. There was no numbness to the touch. As I was interviewing this patient, he shared a very important piece of information with me, which changed the whole management of this patient. He told me that beginning about three weeks ago, he started having very subtle difficulties in urination. Now, as soon as I heard this, the alarm bells went off in my head because anytime a patient complains of some bowel or bladder difficulties, you start thinking about a very dangerous syndrome called cauda equina syndrome, which is a very rare condition. I asked the patient more about this and he told me that sometimes he had a hard time urinating and at other times he would have the urge to urinate very, very quickly and he had to run to the bathroom. When I heard this very key piece of information, I recognized that something wasn't right. So I admitted the patient and I got a stat MRI. Here's this patient's MRI and here's the side view, what we call a sagittal view. On the sagittal view, you can see that right over here is the skin on the patient's back and here's the front. And these boxes over here are the bones called the vertebrae. So right over here is the L5 vertebrae, L4 and L3 vertebrae. Now you can see that the disc between L3 and L4 has got a nice normal color. It's got a nice bright color. It's got a nice tall height, but the disc between L4 and L5 does not look right. It is dark and you can see that this disc has squeezed out and it has in fact herniated and it is pushing against the nerves in the lower back. Now, right over here, this long tunnel that is going up and down, this is called the spinal canal. The spinal canal is the long tube through which all the nerves of the lumbar spine pass through. And right over here between L4 and L5, the spinal canal is completely pinched off. There are no nerves passing through here. And if you were to take a cross section of the spine right over here between L4 and L5, you can see that there is no space available for the nerves. And all of this dark stuff is simply the massive herniated disc, which has basically extruded or squeezed out completely. As a comparison, here's a cross section of a normal level between L4 and L5. At a normal level, you see all this white fluid, which is the spinal fluid, and all these little dots over here are the nerves. These nerves together are called the cauda equina or horse's tail. When you have a massive herniated disc like this, you basically squeeze the cauda equina. And as a result, you can get a very dangerous condition called cauda equina syndrome. And I've actually made a video about this condition about another patient who had a cauda equina syndrome. And I'm gonna put the link in the description below. When you have a cauda equina syndrome, most patients will have severe low back pain. They'll have numbness and tingling in the groin, which can go all the way down the inner thighs, down into the legs. And very importantly, they have bowel and bladder changes. Now, the classic cauda equina syndrome is where you have all of those terrible problems. But in the case of this patient, he really did not have any numbness of the groin. He really did not have any pain shooting down. His only complaint was urinary difficulties. And this had started about three weeks before he came to see me. So I recognized that this was a very serious situation. And I decided that this patient needed emergency surgery. My plan was to go in and do a discectomy surgery. And I do discectomy surgery all the time. And this is a pretty standard procedure. I've made a video about how a discectomy surgery is done. I'm going to put the link in the description below. So when I took this patient to the operating room, interestingly, when I started pulling on this disc, I recognized something very unusual and very interesting, which is that instead of many small pieces of herniated disc, which usually is what you see, this disc came out as a big, thick ribbon. And right over here is a picture of this massive herniated disc. And you can see that when you look at the ruler, this disc is over two inches long. In fact, if I had moved this very last part, which is continuous with the rest of the disc, this herniated disc piece would have been over two and a half inches long. It is as if the entire disc had squeezed out like toothpaste. So in addition to this herniated disc, there were a couple of small pieces. 
And when I looked inside the disk space, there was absolutely no disk remaining. And that was a problem because there's really no support between the L4 and L5 vertebrae. And these levels are going to become unstable and the patient is going to develop something called spondylolisthesis or slippage of the vertebrae. Now, it's very important that you recognize a condition like this. So I changed my surgical plan and I decided to stabilize the L4 and the L5 vertebrae. And the way I did that is I put a spacer called a cage in the disk space so that the L4 and L5 vertebrae can be stabilized. And I also put four screws into the spine and I did a spinal fusion surgery. When I finished my surgery, I looked around and the cauda equina and all the nerves were completely free. There was no problem. Afterwards, the patient did extremely well. He had complete recovery. His urinary function was completely resolved. And within a couple of weeks, his incisional and his back pain resolved almost completely and he made a 100% recovery. What is so interesting about this case is the fact that most patients with a herniated disc will have at least some element of nerve pain going down the leg. Now, some patients with very small herniated discs can have terrible sciatica, but other patients who have bigger herniated discs may not have as much sciatica. So what's interesting is that sometimes a small herniated disc can cause more pain than a big herniated disc. But in the case of this patient, he really had no sciatic pain of any kind, which is something you would not expect. But in retrospect, this patient's disc, I think, started to degenerate and it very, very, very slowly over a period of months and actually a year, year and a half began to herniate and the body somehow accommodated and made adjustments so that this patient, for whatever reason, did not have any sciatica. So the take home point from this case is that sometimes you can have a huge herniated disc, but your symptoms can be very subtle. And it's very important to recognize if you have a patient with cauda equina syndrome, because if you have a patient with cauda equina syndrome and you do a surgery for them, like a discectomy or a laminectomy, but if you don't do it quickly enough, one of the things that can happen is that the patient's sciatic pain and back pain can get better, but the urinary symptoms may never recover completely. And this is especially true for somebody who's very young because you don't want that patient to be incontinent for the rest of their lives. So if you as a patient are having back pain and if you're having some sciatica and if you're having some urinary difficulties, if you're having incontinence, which is unexplained, talk to your doctor about it. It could be a non-spinal condition, but in very rare cases, it could be an example of cauda equina syndrome. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. See you next time.